Weeviet! Hello! Hi! It is William calling from Wee Wee Blogs. On March 12th, Russia announced that it will send the singer Yulia Samelova to the Eurovision Song Contest 2017. She's drawing a lot of attention, not just because of her beautiful voice, but also because of the fact she will become the second artist in a wheelchair to sing at Eurovision, sending a very powerful statement about inclusion. We need to talk about it. Yes, Yulia rose to fame on Factor A. This is the Russian version of X Factor. She covered Moli Va and she sounded amazing. On her own website, she's discussed the fact that she was born healthy and then after some inoculations, her body started to change and she lost her ability to walk. Now, we wrote a story on Wee Blogs about this a few moments after the news was announced and we went with the headline that stresses the fact she is the second singer in a wheelchair to sing at Eurovision. This is meant to celebrate the fact as an achievement because so often people in wheelchairs and with special needs are invisible, they are not given the same status as other people, they are denied opportunities, etc, etc. It's a sad reality and so we wanted to highlight this you know, as a positive thing. But of course there are people on the internet who twist people's words, who want to make it sound like you have different motives and intentions than you do. And normally I just look past this stuff, it doesn't bother me. When you have a blog or a vlog, and the bigger it gets, you're going to have more haters, you're going to have people who write things that just aren't true. But a lot of these comments really struck a nasty <laughs> chord with me. Um, this morning when I woke up, a lot of users had sent me screen grabs of comments that people have made. You know, suggesting that we had really malicious intent. I'll just read some of them to you now. This is from Facebook. Someone writes, Some websites really do have no shame. And later in this thread, another user writes, Horrendous! And then finally, someone writes, I'm disgusted, but I guess it sells, and that to some is all that matters. This offends me on so many levels. Um, and just to give you a bit of context, this is my brother John. He was born in Vietnam and he was perfectly healthy. The war happens, he had a temperature, his brain started to swell, he had encephalitis, there was no medicine, and so slowly he lost the function of his limbs and his mind. So now, despite the fact that he's 47, he cannot walk, he can barely talk, and he has the mind of a three-year-old. And growing up, I was one of his principal caregivers. We would change his diaper, I would take him to the toilet. Um, yeah, he would have accidents, they would have to be cleaned up. And so this issue of kind of someone not being able to walk and having other special needs has always been very, very important to me. And so when I read people who don't even know me, you know, saying things, essentially accusing me of trying to profit off of the Russian singer's disability, it really upsets me. And it kind of takes me back to when I was young because the people on Facebook talk about shame and feeling disgusted. And I think that when you're young and you have a sibling who's handicapped, you often experience those feelings. You feel somewhat ashamed. You feel like your family isn't normal. It's not like everyone else's. And I remember denying the fact that I had a sibling who was disabled when I was young. I couldn't bring myself to even tell people. And people always said, oh, why can't we go to your house? Why can't, you know, we go off with you? Why doesn't your family ever go on vacation? You know, there were reasons, there were practical reasons, because John, my brother, became the center of our life and everything we did, and his needs had to come before our own. And when you're young, you often feel displaced. I was annoyed. Sometimes I resented him. He got all the attention and I didn't. And And it takes a long time to come to terms with that, but obviously as you mature and you get older, you're able to look past that. Uh, when I was 18 and left for university 800 miles away, I, my mother <laughs> had to put John in a nursing home because she couldn't take care of him anymore. There was no one to help her in the house. My father, God rest his soul, he was dying of dementia and Alzheimer's and cancer over several years, and he was wheelchair bound during that whole period. And 
I remember when I would push him around, kind of being taken back to when I was very young and I was pushing my brother around and how people would stare and again the shame and disgust that people kind of expected me to feel and that I indeed did feel. And towards the end of my father's life, when he knew that he was going to go soon, I took him to the nursing home to see my brother. And I remember feeling this sadness coming from him because it was like he had become the wheelchair-bound person that my brother already was and who he had taken care of. But I think there was also a bit of relief, relief and hope that my brother had created a life for himself inside of this nursing home and that he was reaching his potential, which was different than the rest of the children in our family. And I kind of think back to that and it gives me a sense of comfort and calm because he does have a happy life and he's the happiest person I know. He's certainly happier than I am. Um, and it, the wheelchair isn't a limit for him. It, it, you know, it certainly empowers him and lets him move around. And when I think about Russia at Eurovision this year, yes, it's true that they probably picked a singer in a wheelchair so they wouldn't be booed at Eurovision, but I think the message is so much more important than the motive. I think this is going to inspire so many people who are in wheelchairs themselves or their family members and their friends to see that you too can reach your potential and you can do so many things. You can sing at Eurovision as well. And so I could care less if people talk about booing and Russia's motives because this is going to be such a good thing, not just for people in wheelchairs, not for their, just for their family members or friends, but for all of Eurovision. It's really celebrating diversity. Um, and in short, I'm not changing the headline. I'm going to leave the headline as it is, and I'm going to celebrate the fact that she's in a wheelchair. You know, a more measured response might be, oh, you're kind of not emphasizing the fact she's a singer. Well, it's Eurovision. At the point you're on our website, you're probably a singer. So people know she's a singer. And mentioning the wheelchair is kind of just another aspect of her, another dimension. It's an interesting dimension that I chose to focus on in that story. Um, in subsequent stories, obviously, we won't need to keep mentioning it, because now people know. But for the first story, I thought that was, it was important. In any case, this has gotten real, real teary and real, real emotional. So I'm going to stop. But you can follow the latest news on Wubi Blogs. We'll be reviewing her song, and the panel will be reacting uh, to the situation more broadly later. So for now, that's all for me. <laughs> we'll see you later. Bye!